For the Java community, I'm curious, have you guys ever seen any tools that are like game changers? Anything? Throw some out there. Anything, like something that's drastically changed things for you. Like eh, I don't know. I, I put down a couple. Lambdas and strings. Lambdas. Have they? Scala? Scala? <laughs> no, that's, that'd be like negative productivity. Um, Kotlin, maybe you get rid of the null exceptions. Uh, Kubernetes, I've started to think it's most people shouldn't be using it. Um, <laughs> Webflux, has anyone here used Webflux? Boo. Has anyone? It's like, yeah, it's. <laughs> uh, don't use that. Uh, Mokito, great in practice until you realize that people abuse the shit out of it and then everything's a mock and then it actually makes, it makes things worse. Um, design design <laughs> I've uh, <laughs> uh, Design patterns, positive or negative? Singleton is. I've started to think that they're kind of overkill and negative. Gradle? Boo. Oh, 10%. I, I, I think it helps. Uh, but I guess the main point is of all these tools, I don't think there's a single uh, tool that's come out for Java that has had anywhere near as much of an impact, at least for me, as um, LLMs. And this could be, when I, when I say LLMs, I'll say like ChatGPT or Gemini Cloud, whatever, just use anything, uh, preferably advanced. And this is a study that I found for MIT, like if you need to still sell it to somebody, like at work, wherever, uh, this was a study by M MIT done a year ago, um, and I think they only did ChatGPT 3.5. Sorry, yeah, ChatGPT 3.5. And for kind of office work, writing stuff, the productivity improvement that they found was 37 percent. I don't think there's any other tool that you could buy IntelliJ, test co containers, whatever, that's going to give you anywhere near the same benefit. Um, and the analogy that I like to give to people is, because I've been trying to sell people on ChatGPT for about like a year and a half, and there's so much pushback. It's such a radical thing where I kind of, I kind of compare it, like not using AI would be like not using internet. And if you go back, like I, I feel old, but like I remember when the internet was coming out, trying to convince people of the internet you just don't understand the use case. You're like, oh, why would I need the internet? I could just go to the library. It's the same with AI. Um, I still, to this day, I meet software developers that out of some principle or whatever, like, I don't want to use AI. It's, it's cheating or something. It's not pure. Um, and I, f I feel like I've gotten that same conversation from C developers when Java came out. People are like, oh, m m managed memory. Like, why would I want managed memory? I'm just going to code in C++ and deal with pointer errors. Um, or, in, and then I put an asterisk, like ChatGPT, Gemini, Grok, Claude, Lambda, MS Copilot. There's a huge overlap. I keep going back to ChatGPT. I've tried all of them. They kind of stay ahead of the curve. If you pay for the advanced ones, like Gemini, uh, has some nice G drive integration, which actually ChatGPT also added recently, but it doesn't matter. Um, who here is still on ChatGPT 3.5? I would compare it to the equivalent of like, if you're using the internet, you're still on dial-up. Like that's, um, that's what it's like. And it's, I remember moving from dial-up to broadband, where if you've only ever used dial-up, you don't understand the like I, like why would I like why would I need broadband if I could check all my emails with dial up like you don't understand the use cases until you try it and play around with it a little bit or um, and I'll, I'll say that all the free LLMs are kind of dumb that way where you you try them and you're like oh, okay it's kind of smart and you get stuck in this use case and you don't understand why you'd want to upgrade. Um, so I would say kind of like the 20 bucks, there's no other tool, and I'll show you guys how, that has 
improve my productivity by so much. And I do want to point out that I'm not affiliated with OpenAI. I have no commissions earned from this pitch, and I have no agenda to drive consumption of something, et cetera. Um, and I do want, I didn't want to quickly go over the differences because it's not just that you get access to ChatGPT4. There's a whole bunch of hidden little things. Obviously, the first one is the smarter model, especially for coding. It's massive difference. Um, like any, anything to do with code, I just find 3.5 kind of falls apart. Um, the model data is newer. If you switch to the new one, I know a big complaint is people will, you know, you ask it like, what's in Java 23? ChatGPT 3.5, the model, I think, is two or three years out of date now, um, especially for coding that helps. Working memory, even if you're using 3.5. Um, image capabilities, but I think they actually just turned this on for free today for default users. Um, I saw a post about it. And I underlined input, because it's the output is kind of fun once you start once you get it, you, you, you could find, like, you create little images. It's the input that I found where I get the biggest benefit. Actually, hold on one second. Um, and then getting into the advanced stuff that I've really been taking advantage of, advanced data analytics. This is where if it has a complicated problem, it'll just write the Python code for it and try to solve the problem using code instead of just the model. And I'll show you guys the benefits. And this custom GPT thing, which I think was also just added today for free users, but you could use custom GPTs, but you can't um, write them. But you could actually kind of do these no code um, scripts. You could add API calls, REST calls, workflows, all in like human language. I'm usually not a fan of no code solutions, but ChatGPT kind of changes all of that. And uh, yeah, I added an asterisk because actually some of this stuff was added. Um, the big concern, like I've seen people um, like worry about LLMs taking over their jobs. Um, I don't think they will take over anyone's jobs. I think what will take over your job is the other person that learned how to use AI or LLMs like that person's going to take over your job. Just like I'm sure 20 years ago or 30 years ago, somebody was, there was some stubborn developers that refused to use the internet. Well, I don't think they exist anymore. Uh, just like the internet. Um, how do you unlock these tools? Like it, you have to see the use cases. And then I do find you have to understand the limitations. It's not perfect, just like any tool. Like I'm sure we, with, decades of using Google, you kind of know these little limitations that I know using the is irrelevant for a search. You got to use quotes. There's some nuance to using ChatGPT. It won't solve everything, but I've seen people just arbitrarily give up on ChatGPT because they hit a limitation They're like, oh, this is useless. Um, exploring use cases, the you just have to start using it. It's this analysis paralysis. I've seen so many people they want to get into the AI. I tell them about ChatGPT, and they're like, oh, well, I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn about algorithms and read books and, and figure out all the different types of um, deep learning or whatever. Like, no, the best way to get value is just like coding or the internet or whatever. Just start playing around. Like, open it, install it, and start playing around with it. Um, I mean, the first use case, pretty easy, studying aid. I've been using it, like even for simple questions, like what we had today, like what's new in 20, Java version 23 or 16? You, in the, in the old times, like I would just go to Google and like try to consolidate all the info. Now I just ask ChatGPT. It's almost becoming my Google replacement and it formulates the data exactly how I want it. Simple lookup, not that advanced. I did, pass um, AWS developer exam recently, uh, just a research, but I used it, like I, I didn't buy a study guide. I cut the study time, my study time down to 20 hours. I just abused ChatGPT as much as I can for like, give me the questions. Um, you get a sample question, you have it to solve it for you. You explain why 
it doesn't work with 3.5. Like only, only four understands like these deeper questions, especially with the nuance, because it didn't get the first question uh, on your little puzzler. Uh, so for studying, it's great. Nothing big. Like f so far, I've only really showed like a, a more advanced Google replacement. Where it's been saving me a lot of time is uh, the writing. Like I, I love coding. I hate all this little um, BS that y you get as you kind of progress. Where instead of coding, you're you're writing emails to angry customers, or writing stories, or writing plans. And I hate that stuff. It has massively cut down on the number of uh, TPS cover letters I've had to write uh, myself. Um, I mean, e even if you, you, could get, you could really get into more elaborate things, like if, if you think Kotlin is an amazing language, which you should, and you needed to sell it to leadership, <laughs> just write up, the, write up the entire leadership like thing I in Kotlin. Um, I always found it interesting that you could you could tell it which keywords to use. So if you want synergies and strategic advantages and innovation, um, I mean, we could try this one right now. Um, everyone's seen the UI, right? Yeah. She's this big. So just copy paste it in. I always default to four. Like I don't, I don't even go back to 3.5 and it'll just spam it out. Uh, anything you want. I'm sure the word synergies is in there somewhere. <laughs> Strategic advantages. Wow, Hogwarts Express one. Okay. I think I said humor. I think I said humor. Um, oh, yeah, I did. You're looking. Yeah. Um, and then let's just say you do get buy in on your Kotlin. Um, your, your Kotlin. Um, Switch from Java, you could write a motivational speech for your team to get, really, um, to get them really pumped up. And the other fun thing that I love to do, which really surprises me, I, I remember how interesting this was when I figured it out, is you could write in a style of something. So you could do Dr. Zeus, that was the easy one, like anything you want, Shakespearean monologue, Yoda from Star Wars, sports coach, halftime pep talk, uh, King James Bible. Um, <laughs> Anything you want? Is there anything you guys want to call out to try? <laughs> Pardon me. I mean, yeah. Or something completely yeah, different. <laughs> I feel like it's not nuance, nuanced yeah, enough. Yeah, like, bird, bird like released, it yeah, needs to be over the top. From Part Sesame Street. Uh, in the style of Bert from. You got to do Bert and <laughs> you, you want the dialogue there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they got the rubber right. ducky. All right, I could do it. Um, Can you add a spell to the style of Hogwarts? Pardon me? Add a spell to include your team. a spell from Hogwarts and make it. <laughs> make it oh. You got auto corrected there by a not AI. <laughs> yeah. Make it. Do you want a conversation back and forth? Conversation back and forth forth with Ernie and Bert. Done. There you go. It's our, it's about our software development toolkit. You bet, Bert. <laughs> uh, but just like that. And you could tweak it. I like going back and rewriting, and I'll get into uh, why that, that's really helpful. Um, OK, it's fun. Um, super huge time saver. Pretty much, I've gotten to the point where, unless I'm writing a, a, a one sentence email, I do everything from ChatGPT. Um, stories, I, I find sometimes you have these PMs that are really stricklers for like, you need exactly this format and this acceptance criteria, and everything's got to be formatted exactly this way. So I've created giant, like, pretty big prompts. I mean, this is a simplification. But um, like even, even the breaking down of your story, I know you need to move from JBoss to Jetty. Just create the entire story for me, create all the steps, like do everything, and maybe iterate over it a few times. 
uh, less, a lot less writing. Um, does everyone here mandate PRs? Yes. Uh, I think I think mandated PRs are a waste of time. But if I was mandated, I would just take the diff of the code, send it to ChatGPT, and just have it write the comments for me so that I, it looks like I did the PR. Um, <laughs> and maybe even set up a bot that it does it for me on an auto delay, like auto random delay of <laughs> somewhere between six to 12 hours. But what I did want to point out is that it, it, it works great with um, unstructured data. I could just dump the diff in at the end and I'll figure it out. Could, could you give it a, a checklist in that prompt of, th of specific things to look for? Yeah. Yeah, that would be useful. Um, search and solutioning. It's a, it's a lot more than just the like the studying, but like even st Stack Overflow. I, I don't know who, if, does anyone still use Stack Overflow? <laughs> I know since ChatGPT went down, uh, came out uh, a year and a half ago, uh, the traffic to Stack Overflow has been tanking. Even, even before that, people yeah. would start using GitHub yeah. more just to look into answers, just go directly to the open source community and put the questions in. Yep. It's been more useful when ChatGPT, Gemini, or other AIs has to be useful. Uh, the Stack Overflow recently partnered with OpenAI, so now... Uh, oh, now it is, yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if they scraped it before at some point. But any type of select, it's a complete Stack Overflow replacement. Uh, for quick lookups, it's great. But also for um, just like the tedious snippet writing, you, like do regex for this, write code for this. Like I, I don't, like the little snippets of code, I just have uh, ChatGPT write for me. Um, or like tedious, if, if somebody's, if you're used to having a platform as a service and then a company forces you to use uh, containers and Kubernetes and you're, you're sick of it, just have ChatGPT write all the Docker and pod files for you. Mm -hmm. um, I found that's, that's been really useful. And you can start getting into, I'll explain why the coding doesn't work for bigger stuff, but you can use it for like actually maybe starting a template, creating your initial, code, um, like you're, if you're starting a project from scratch, maybe architecting it out. Uh, visual digitization. I know we talked about how it could do v image output. Has any, everyone done the, who's done the image output? Oh, so just a few. Okay, so, and I'll show the demo later. But the best thing is this vig visual digitization. So you could take a photo on your thing, like I did earlier, of, um, that problem that we had on the board and just hit solve, it did get it wrong, but uh, <laughs> uh, I think it was, there's some nuance. Um, but like, let's just say you love UML diagrams uh, and somebody whiteboarded a UML diagram for you, you could take that image, give it to ChatGPT and just create the code for you. Um, it's, it's a lot more than just simple OCR and actually, my next example was that like it is a lot more than like simple OCR. You could start doing an analysis of what, what of what's in the image. I don't know who who, you, who here travels for work, but I used to dread like like the weekly do your expenses and like even with basic OCR tools that like detect the text, it would st I would still have to go through the table and fill in the blanks. But you could ask ChatGPT to do that. Um, and getting into the more advanced stuff, I know um, the CEO, Sam, uh, what's, what's, Sam, what's his last name? Altman, not, not the FTX guy. Uh, <laughs> the, he, he talks about like his biggest usage is the brainstorming where you don't even know what to ask it. Um, you just have a problem and you just feed it the context and you just, just say like, I don't know, like figure out what to, <laughs> figure out what to do for me. Um, so if, if, if you had something really, I mean like if you had a slow Maven build, just give it your, uh, your Maven output and just have it solved for you. Like, I, I don't know, like figure it out for me and do it. 
Um, I had someone recommend Ant to me recently. I think it's making a comeback too. Pay for GPT four. I've um, and you could feed a lot of data. It's not just text. You, you could actually do PDF input, Word input, PowerPoint input, anything. Uh, I've started using against retrospectives, where instead of looking at the last retrospective, if you store it in Jira, just take all of your retrospectives, especially if you're tracking them with action items and everyone's pain points, just feed all of them in and do an analysis. Find the key patterns, find the reoccurring issues. Um, super useful. Um, I know somebody here was saying speeding up Spring Boot times. Uh, I love using ChatGPT for like tool comparisons. Um, Micronaut, I don't know if, I guess you guys are staying on Spring Boot. But any type of tool comparison, just give me the pros and cons, here are the tools. And you can, as like, a, if, if your team is unsure of which tool to use, you could just have ChatGPT pick for you. Just give it the context and say, we've been, Spending too much time nitpicking if we should do tabs or spaces, pick for us, done. Uh, it's been a nice deal breaker. Well, that would be a good live demo. Pardon me? That would be a good live demo. You'll lose half the room either way. Of what? <laughs> tabs Just make sure you tabs have or <laughs> spaces <laughs> in Java. Pick one. You must. There you go. Sometimes if you don't make it explicit. Yeah, there you go, spaces. Yeah, everyone, n no one here uses tabs, do they? Uh, I'm, I'm good with that answer. Okay, what about <laughs> Maven or Gradle? Oh, no, I oh, see sometimes edging, edging. you must pick one or else. <laughs> oh, boom. Oh. Gradle <laughs> 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 is the tabs of built systems. Uh, okay. Um, text-based, uh, I'll say that anything, anything that's text-based, you could uh, put in, like, yeah, you could translate Java to Colin, Java to whatever, English to Klingon. I'm sure you could write stuff in Klingon. Anything it's, that's text-based, it's probably in the model, if it had access to in the public domain. Uh, but also file based, sorry, text based file formats. Anything that you could think of, like if there's a file format like Mermaid that's text based. Um, I know there's a 3D object file format that I used. Um, I used it for iCal once where I had this really complicated schedule and I'd said just create the iCal text file for me so that I could import. Uh, JSON XML, if it's there, it probably understands it. Um, if you want to create a UML diagram, because I I think they're great. Any JBs, those are my favorite. Um, anyone here use EJBs 2.0? 2.0 or 3.0? 2.0. Nice. My favorite. <laughs> uh, th this is where we're going to get a little bit more advanced. So with I, I think they added this to the free version, but it still uses the dumb model. But there's a thing called data analytics that you may have noticed if you write more complicated queries where if it detects that it, the problem's kind of complicated, especially if there's math involved, it'll actually write Python code for you and write and run that Python code to do some analysis. Um, pretty useful. So if you have, say if you have like a history of um, I don't know, like commit commit history, and you just wanted to like track your information, maybe how long people are integrating, anything at all. Like you don't even have to tell it what to do, and it'll um, it'll just start coming to its own deductions. And I pulled off just before I uh, here. Let's start a new thread. I did a search for random. Hold on a second like random data, one second. So this is just like a random financial sample of data I pulled from uh, the internet. I don't even know what's in it. I'm gonna give it to um, ChatGPT. Uh, make sense of this, draw some conclusions. And 
plot some data. So it's running Python code. Um, yeah, and it knows what's in there. It's probably going to do a graph. Yep, and just going in and doing the stuff. Pretty cool. Um, what graph is it going to make? And going. Oh, and it, and it it'll auto correct because I remember there's uh, when I tried this earlier. There's a, there's a typo or like invalid token, and it ran the code, got got an error, looked up what the error was, and then fixed it, its code and reran it, and then I don't know decided to plot m monthly sales and profit trends. Um, it's pretty useful. Hey, quick question. Yep. Can I ask a question? Yep. Uh, can you load a zip file with multiple files? Can I do what? Upload like a zip file with multiple files and tell it like, hey, analyze all of this. Multiple files, I think you can. You could also add them to the custom GPT, which uh, I'll show you. Like you can have multiple files. Um, so that's data analytics. Custom GPTs, anyone here use uh, custom GPTs? Yeah. One person. I've seen them, but I haven't made one myself. Uh, you f I, I'll find that over time, I have, because you could create threads in, ch in ChatGPT for different conversations, and I find that it gets to the point where I have the same thread, the same beginning prompt all over again, where, okay, like, here's my prompt to, like, write emails to my boss that needs to, like, have exactly this formatting, and I always save that prompt, it's always the same. Um, so you could create your own custom GPT that kind of has a specific purpose for that thing, but it could also call APIs. You could also upload multiple files like PDFs, Excel, to give it additional content. Um, what else can it do? Yeah, call APIs, give it your own content of knowledge lookup, um, and then like share them with people. So it's kind of like your own custom GPT for a specific use case. Um, so this is, this is a simple one that I created at work where I just needed, I, I needed, I, I, I found I was like sending out the same team's message to people about some GitHub commit history. Uh, does everyone know what an MS Teams webhook is? Yes? So you, there's just, you create a URL in MS Teams or Slack. Sorry, Slack has them too. You create a URL, you send message to that URL boom, whatever happens. Uh, you could actually create an entire GPT that will do all this stuff for you. So in my case, actually first I'll show you guys, um, oops. Oh, and also the, they just released the Mac OS app as well. But um, it's actually hold on. One second. So GP, custom GPTs are on the left. I, I've made a couple for myself. I have one for this very specific uh, agile story writing that we're doing at work. Um, so it's just a super customized story writer that I've like fully specced out. This is exactly what this one person needs. And there's no more like back and forth. And people are really blown away how quickly I generate stories because you feed it like, I could whip out like 20 stories in Jira in the span of half an hour, where some people will like, you know, uh, they block off like two days of Jira creation. And it, it is super fun when um, people know at work that I use ChatGPT, but when people don't and they just see how massively productive you are and they don't understand why, it's pretty amusing. Is that actually hooking into the like Jira APIs and creating you could. APIs for you? Um, I don't have it hooked up into work, but for my other DevOps example, um, you specify, so you have your instruction that's specific to that use case, but you also give it actions of what to do. So in this case, I gave it um, 
uh, I think for this one, I just gave it access to my GitHub repo. It was public, so I didn't need to do OAuth. You could give it OAuth access. You can give it, um, you could do the security around it, like any type of REST call or any type of call, API call, you could configure it to do it. And then in your instructions, you'd just say like, when this, call this action. Uh, so even if I say, let's go back, my GPTs, you could, you could integrate it into Office 365. You could give it your own data. I'll just store you one sec. Okay, so my notification one, like it knows about my functions and I could just say like, it, it knows anytime I say to notify, notify, uh, notify some f funny Java joke. Starting action, it'll, um, there's some security around it. You have to confirm uh, the first time that like to call the outside hook uh, goes and calls the API. And then if I go into my channel, uh, oops, why do Java developers wear glasses? Because they don't see sharp. <laughs> uh, so I thought this API thing is pretty cool. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, visual generation, it, it's kind of gimmicky um, for work sometimes. It's fun with kids too, but you could give it like anything you want in any style you want of like, hey, draw X in this style and I'll create it for you. Uh, so I created one of uh, Java Man, but it kept thinking it was like a coffee Java Man. So you have to say programming superhero. And this is what it came out with. And I did want to, I did want to point out that something that they added not too long ago, you could actually, what you used to do if you don't like an image, you'd have to create a new prompt and just with the tweak, but it would completely generate a new image because there's a certain component of randomness. What you could do now is you could select a piece of your image and say what you want. Uh, so I did this, I was like, oh, instead of a hamster, let's do an elephant. I don't think this one was perfect. You could, you could put it, you could draw around it again uh, and then to do it, like to uh, erase it, I could, you could just say like erase this elephant. It used to be really bad with letters and writing, but it's actually gotten a lot better. I, I used to use Mid Journey, which is another product. Um, it's gotten much better. Like it's, it's really interesting to see how good this stuff has gotten within a year. Uh, next one, the limitations. So the most common concerns that I've seen from people of like, oh, I don't want to use ChatGPT for reason X. Uh, the data privacy. People are like, oh, I don't want to put my data in the cloud. I don't feel safe. Uh, yes, by default, the free and the plus version, th it will take your data and add it to the model. Um, I don't care about like little like, oh, what's, tell me a Java joke. I don't care if it knows that I ask that I um, ask for a Java joke, but if you're sending client sense of information, like number one, you probably shouldn't. Uh, but if you are, because they're not letting you use MS Copilot, uh, not make sure there's a setting to turn off the train model button. And I did hear, I did hear of a story in Calgary at a um, company where there was this niche oil and gas company, Renewable Energy, and they had one keyword and one salesperson kept using ChatGBT on like emails around this one keyword in the super niche industry. He didn't turn off the train model. It ended up in the model, the super specific keyword, and then a competitor found out and was just able to like Hey, ChatGPT, what do you know about this keyword? Tell me everything about this keyword. And a lot of data got revealed. Um, but yeah, turn off the data. It's a one, one setting. Even for free, you could turn it off. I mean, you could also strip out client sensitive information. I mean, if you're just asking it to create another generic CRUD app, like, I don't think there's anything sensitive. Don't put your passwords into ChatGPT. <laughs> um, hallucinations. Everyone's complaining about this hallucination thing is, is a, it's overrated. 
I'm sure there's bad results on Google. I'm sure there's books that have written things that are wrong. Yes, it's wrong sometimes. If it doesn't know it and you keep pestering it, it'll say like, no, I don't know this, I don't know this. But if you keep pestering, it'll actually just make something up. Yeah? Can you adjust the temperature on ChatGPT? Uh, yeah, you can. You could do it through the API playground. And I think you could actually do it through um, the, the prompt. I think you guys should just say temperature. And, and temperature is the, it's the, v it's the randomness. Yeah. It's how cliche. If you have no temperature, I don't know what the default setting is. I know it's not zero. If there's no temperature, it'll just write things in the most cliche way possible. Um, yeah, but the hallucination thing is overblown. Um, this other one that I, that I find is people use ChatGBT 3.5. They try, they start using it on more and more complicated problems. And then they give up because they're like, oh, ChatGPT 3.5, it, it couldn't solve my complicated code example. It sucks. I'm not going to upgrade to 4. Yep. Have you tried, like, MS Copilot? Yes, it's ChatGPT 4 based, backed, or 3 sometimes. OK. And like, ha yeah, how do you find like Copilot compares to like 3.5? It's, it's a neutered version of ChatGPT. Oh, yeah. That's how, how I would call it. Uh, MS Copilot and even MS uh, GitHub Copilot, they're all ChatGPT based with some tweaks. Uh, but I know especially the MS Copilot or even Bing, I know you could kind of get, you could use Bing and I think it's ChatGPT 3.5 by default. They're kind of, they feel neutered. But if you have it at work, like it's still better than nothing. Um, but yeah, if you're stuck on 3.5, like don't not upgrade to 4 because you don't like 3.5, like it, probably if you tried four, you could get better results. And I know from an API cost, um, it's 20 times more expensive. So I mean, it's probably, I would say like, it, if it's 20 times more expensive, it's probably 20 times as costly for OpenAI. I wouldn't be surprised if it's somewhere in that bar, bar park. You won't notice the difference on the simple questions. Like if you just ask it, when was the last time and when was Java 18 released? I'm sure you're not going to tell the difference between 3.5 and 4, but for any type of advanced writing, solutioning, you'll tell the difference. Um, yes? For a lot of the simple stuff, we found that 3.5 is a lot faster than 4 at the very beginning. Yeah. Have they actually like elevated 4 now so that it's answering just as quick as 3.5 was? Yeah, it's faster. I just default, honestly, I, I just default to 4. Because okay. uh, sometimes you'll use. There's a cap on how much you could use for, and then you go back to 3.5, and it's frustrating because you use for, and you're used to like talking to the super intelligent, not, not super intelligent, but like you're talking to somebody at a university level, and then you blow through your cap, and then it, you could temporarily, you could use 3.5 unlimited, and it feels like you're talking to somebody in grade school. <laughs> like it's back to, back to dial up, it's frustrating. I did add uh, ChatGPTO. Um, I know there's a lot of marketing around it. It was like, oh, it's their new model. It's dumber than ChatGPT4. That's why it's free. It's actually uh, part of the free account, but I think there's a cap. Uh, ChatGPTO is, or Omni is not as good as uh, ChatGPT4, which it wasn't obvious. Um, the other one, lar large data, like, the other thing you learn pretty quickly is like there's a limit on how much working memory it has. You can't feed it, and it, it's not that big. It's actually, um, um, it's actually just a couple of pages. You can't feed it a 1,000 page PDF and tell it to analyze everything. The working memory is only, I mean, they usually talk in tokens. In, in the AI, sorry, in the GUI, the output is always uh, 1.5 pages long. Like you can't say write a story 50 pages long. It's 1.5 pages long. There's tons of workarounds. You could do the API playground. One of the only benefit, like 
Some of the different, the nice differentiators with the other models like Cloud is they have bigger context windows, but this is really why um, things like MS Copilot still don't work really well with big code bases. Like they work well on your little code snippet, but they can't, they won't refactor your entire code base. You can't say like, rewrite this entire giant mess of a Java monolith, go, because it could only understand or at a time its context window. Uh, outdated information, people complain that, oh, ChatGPT 3.5, the data is you know, three years old, or two years old, um, yeah, just upgrade to four. I think Opus or Omni is um, pretty up to date as well. But it is important to know that like you don't have, yep. So uh, with ChatGPT, you can upload a file. Yep. So it performs some sort of rag process. Is it, is it expanding your contact window when you do that? Um, there's some intelligence to it where if you give it a big document, you could either do the, sometimes they'll do the Python interpreter where it'll break up the thing in chunks. Uh, if the file is really small, just take that file and add it in the context window. I think if it's big, if it's big, it'll actually process page by page. You can upload it, and I'll get into the reg stuff. Like for um, uh, for the custom GPTs, for example, you could give it a 100-page PDF, but it'll never be able to comprehend it all at once. It'll it'll chunk it with something called reg. Uh, it can't do math. I mean, the, the advanced data, like if it runs the Python code for you, if it knows to kick off Python to solve the problem for you, it'll do the math. But if you ask a regular LLM to like, what's, what's 123 times 26? It'll guess, because it'll just look at statistically, like, oh, I don't know, like this looks like this, and it'll guess. It won't do the actual calculation. It'll probably get one plus one equals two, because it's seen the data enough times. And it's like, okay, one plus one always seems two. But it can't, by default, if it doesn't kick off advanced data analytics, it can't do adv advanced math calculations, which is uh, useful to know. Um, the losing context is something that people will pick up. If you, you open up a thread and you start talking back and forth to it, like maybe, maybe you're using it for laughter of like, you have somebody, um, I don't know, chatting with you on iMessage or WhatsApp, and instead of you sending the messages, you're just taking that person's message and pasting them into ChatGPT and saying like, reply with a funny joke, and you keep going back and forth, like eventually it'll start truncating the top. So if you said something like, my name is Victor, as it gets to the bottom, eventually it'll forget what your name is. Uh, there's like a working memory. There's workarounds ar around it. Um, it is kind of why I like to refresh the prompt sometimes. Like if things get garbled, I like to refresh the prompt and resend it, especially if it's big. Or I like to write, I actually, instead of doing this back and forth of um, um, tweak this, like if I'm, if I'm writing an email, I don't like it, and I say tweak this email, send, tweak this email, send, instead of iterating over it, I might just write a big prompt and keep tweaking the prompt and resubmitting it. I find that works really well. Um, the RAG limitations. So this is where I think the biggest gap, one of the biggest gaps with LMs are now. It's, it's not like it, you can't easily add data into uh, ChatGPT and have it understand in aggregate. There's these things called RAG, which in vector da databases and embeddings, th they don't work like the data in the model. If you send it a 100 page or a 300 page PDF, you can't say, summarize the entire article for me. There's a lookup process of embeddings and like right now, I don't think there's any perfect solutions. I've heard about graph rag, I've heard about different solutions, but when you're adding your own data, I've noticed it, you can't really query in an aggregate way. So I've just, if, if you're sending it your own data, there's still some pretty ser serious limitations. Um, usage caps, if you have the fr P 
paid version. Actually, even with the free version now, they've added ChatGPT for Opus. And I think there's, I don't know, 15 calls every three hours. So what you could do, like my solutions around that is just, I make really big prompts and you could ask multiple questions in the same prompt. Um, if I get really involved, even with ChatGPT4, because I think it's 60 API calls in three hours. So there was a time when I was using it so much that I would get up at 5 a.m., send a quick message so that it started the three hour call, uh, the three hour timer, go back to bed, uh, and then two hours later, blow through the cap and then have it reset in an hour. Because um, especially if you're doing like advanced writing and there's a lot of back and forth, it's really easy to blow through these caps. Uh, it's 60 calls for three, uh, 60 calls for three hours. You could go to the API playground. So there's actually, if you have an account, if you just go to openaiapi.com, you could go to the playground and then pay by call. But it actually, if with ChatGPT4, it could get expensive really fast. I think it's, I, I've made queries to ChatGPT4 and depending on how many tokens you pass into it and in the output, you get into like 10, 20, 30 cents a call. And if you're going back and forth a lot, or if you're integrating with the API, I mean, it gets really expensive. Um, resisting change. Um, choosing not to use APIs. Sorry, choosing not to use ChatGPT or LMs like daily for everything is like not using the internet 20, 30 years ago. Uh, I, I would think it's crazy if you look at, I don't know if, if you look back if anyone told you 30 years ago to not use the internet, uh, I think we look back at them now and we laugh at them. Um, call to action. I mean, just, just start playing around with it for anything, anything with text. The upgrade to plus the $20, $30, like it's super well worth it. You can try the other ones, Gemini, Claude, Grok. I just keep going back to ChatGPT, even with their big changes a month ago where they added Omni. Uh, some of the demos that they've shown of um, where you could talk to it live and like it'll just, or share a screen with you and it'll talk to you almost like um, in the movie Her, or uh, pretty mind blowing. Or even the, what they've been demoing with the auto video generation is pretty cool. Um, and then at work, uh, I would say like push for MS Copilot if your company's on Office 365. I know so that it's a lot easier to sell people on MS Copilot, even though it's ChatGPT behind the hood, um, than it is on uh, ChatGPT Enterprise. Because there's actually four versions. There's um, ChatGPT Free, Plus, Teams, and Enterprise. Um, and yeah, that's it. Questions? <laughs>